Hi all. So in today's class, we will be studying about type and order of a system that is basically a control system. Then what do you mean by characteristic equation? So type we normally say as type 0, type 1. So we will study what all these things in detail. So last class we have studied what is a transfer function. So how do we form a closed loop transfer function that is g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s, then effect of feedback, then what are the poles and zeros. So all these things we have seen in the last class. Okay, so today we will see. So what do you mean by characteristic equation? So denominator polynomial equated to zero. So we know that a closed loop transfer function is equal to g of s by one plus g of s into h of s that is in the s plane or the s domain. So this one plus g of s into h of s is equal to zero. And that is what we call the character characteristics equation. So the same is applicable in S domain as well as if it is in the polynomial form. So denominator, denominator of the transfer function equal to zero. So the denominator polynomial equated to zero is called characteristic equation of the system. So last class we have seen how do we represent it in numerator denominator form. So if that denominator is equated to zero, then we can say that is the characteristic equation. I will just show you how we have represented it. It in numerator denominator form, but this way, uh, the same thing here. So the polynomial form, it was like this, right? C of S by R of S is equal to C is zero, R, R. So if this denominator polynomial is equal to zero, then that forms the characteristic equation. So in a closed loop transfer function, it is g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s. So 1 plus g of s into h of s, which is the numerator, if that is equal to 0, then we can say that is the characteristic equation. Okay. So the characteristic equation is nothing more than setting the denominator of closed loop transfer function. That is it. Denominator equal to 0. So in control theory, we normally uh, analyze the feedback system in two ways. First one is the transfer function method, which you are studying now. And then later towards the end of this course, you will be studying state space analysis. And then in next semester, you will be studying advanced control theory. So where you will be dealing with more with nonlinear system and with more things. So Mainly we just in this coursework, you are concerned with transfer function, which is a which is in the frequency domain. That is in the S domain. When the transfer function method is used, attention is focused on location in the S domain. So uh, last class you have seen, there will be a, a X, Y plane like that. So this will be the real axis and this will be the imaginary axis and the poles and zeros are located here, right? So located in the S plane, so this is actually the S plane where the transfer function poles or zeros so are located. So based on that, we, we talk about the stability. Two different transfer functions are of interest. So basically, you know, open loop and closed loop. So uh, characteristic equation we normally define for closed loop. So next module, when we study about first order and second order system, we will study in detail about the characteristic equation. Now I'm just introducing to you. So that's how your syllabus is going like that. So I'm going strictly with the syllabus so that it is more easy for you to understand. And also you can write down the notes. So once I finish all the theory parts in this module, I will be going with one or two videos of complete numerical problems. Okay, so now we have seen what is a characteristic equation. Now let's see what is type and order of a system. So system is our control system. So order of a system is basically the order of the differential equation. So you have seen the transfer function is basically made of differential equations. Then later we took the Laplace transform of the equation and then we form the transfer function. So we have, we have numerator by denominator that is differential equation. That's I have shown you just now. So the order of the system is given by the order of the differential. So order of the differential equation you have learned in mathematics, it will be the highest power, right? 
So it is the maximum power of S in the denominator polynomial of transfer function. The maximum power of S also gives the number of poles, right? So if it is S raised to four in the denominator, that is the maximum power is four. Also denominator roots will give the number of poles. So it will have four poles also. And so the order of the system basically, order of the system is also given by number of poles of the transfer function. That is order, order is very important. So number of poles of the transfer function or it is the power of the denominator polynomial. And now what do you mean by type of a system? Type number is given by the number of poles of loop transfer function at the origin. So number of poles strictly at the origin. So if you have S into S plus one, that means one pole at the origin and one pole at minus one, right? Example, one by S into S plus one, S by S into S plus 1, if this is the transfer function, what does that mean? 1, 0 at origin, 1 pole at origin, that is S is equal to 0, and then 1 pole at minus 1. So this is how it is, will be, right? So type number is given by number of poles of loop transfer function. The type number decides the steady state error. So now you don't worry about what is steady state error. You study in next module. Just keep it in mind. Simply, the type number is specified for loop transfer function, but order can be specified for any transfer function. That is, order we say for both open loop and closed loop transfer function, but type number we say only for loop transfer functions. So type number is given by number of poles of loop transfer function at origin, but order is given by number of poles of the transfer function. So you will understand, I will give you one example and you will understand. So number of poles of loop transfer function will give you the type and order means the entire transfer function, everything. That's why we say it order. So poles at the origin actually gives a type. Let's see an example. So this is an example given by g of s is equal to, so I'll just write down g of s is equal to s plus z by s plus p. So z is the zero and p is the pole. Now the type of a system is essentially number of poles at the origin. The number of poles at the origin of the s plane. To check the number of poles at the origin, we have the uh, method. So you have the follow. So this is a transfer function. So uh, H of S is, is equal to G, uh, 1 by S into S plus 2. So what are the number of poles? S is equal to 0, S is equal to minus 2, right? S is equal to 0, S is equal to minus 2. Here, one pole lies at the origin, right? Hence, it is a type 1 system. I think now it's clear for you. For the loop transfer function, how many poles are at the origin? That count gives the type. So this is a type one system because one pole at the origin. Okay, now let's see another example which explains us about the type two system or type zero system, both is there. So G of S is equal to one by S plus two. So one by S plus two means it has only one pole and that pole lies at minus two and there is nothing at the origin. So it is a, there is no, pole at the origin, so it's a type zero system. Then we have another one that is one by S square into S plus two. So S square means two poles at the origin, two lies at the origin and one at minus two. So one at minus two is fine. So total three poles, two at the origin and one at minus two. So two at the origin means it's a type two system. Now, basic conclusions I'm going, I'm going to say, so this you can see, C of S by R of S, that is the transfer function is the Laplace transform of output by input. So this is in the polynomial form. You can see the numerator is the polynomial of degree M, fine. And denominator is the polynomial of degree N. So degree N of the denominator polynomial is called order of the system, already explained. Now we can give a time constant or we can give gain. K will be the gain and you can write it in one plus xt form because when you solve this, you will get the number of uh, poles, right? So 
So this can be written as s minus z one, s minus z two, and it will go to s minus z n. Similarly, you can write s minus p one into s minus p two, and it will go to s minus p n. So the same thing you can write in the one plus s t form. Also, if you take p common, it will be one plus s p, the root. This is a zero, right? One plus s t is one example, one numerical problem. When you do, you will understand how we are presenting it. So this is the time constant form, and Paul zero form. So this is actually Paul zero form. So three forms are there. One is the numerator denominator polynomial form, and this is the time constant form, and this is the Paul zero form. So from in the Paul zero form, if you take, so you have the Paul zero form as s minus z one. So if you take z one common, then you can write s by z one minus one, right? So it will be minus z one into one minus s by z one. So you can write minus z one into one minus s t, where t equal to one by z one, which is the root. So that is the that is how we have written is all zero time constant form, where t is the time constant. So Paul zero form you can see. So here is that one is that two is that two is the roots of the numerator polynomial, and that gives us a zero. And here I have written p one, p two, p three. They are the roots of the denominator polynomial. That is the poles of the origin, and that gives the order. And type is what the number of polynomial that is denominator polynomial roots or the poles at the origin of the loop transfer function. Okay. So again, I will generalize. So you you know open loop transfer function c of s by r of s is equal to g of s by one plus g of s into h of s. This is negative feedback. Negative feedback. Either you can directly solve it or even you can write it from Mason's gain formula. So here c of s by r of s is the overall transfer function, and g of s into h of s is the open loop transfer function. We already seen these things. And general representation of the open loop transfer function is given by g of s h of s of a feedback system is given by g of s into h of s is equal to k into one plus s t z one plus one plus s t z two into by s raised to s into one plus. So this is the general form that is pole zero form. This is the zero. This is the pole. So this is a time constant form. And so here we have s raised to n, right? So here n is the number of poles at the origin, and it represents the type number of the system. So type of the system is defined as the number of poles at the origin of the open loop transfer function g of s into h of s. Whereas order will be for open loop and closed loop transfer function. So for a unity feedback system, h of s is equal to one, and hence loop transfer function only g of s is g of s only. Feedback is one means we have only g of s. So we have seen what is a characteristic equation. So going ahead, we will be mentioning that only a C E characteristic equation. Then type. What do you mean by order? And we have seen examples also. Okay, so I think it's clear for you. Thank you.